Hello and welcome to Talk Art. I'm Sally Rain and I will be your host as we delve into the world of the artist and explore the art that's all around us. Talk Art is sponsored by the Silicon Valley Open Studios. During the first three weekends in May, hundreds of local artists open their studios to the public. For more information, go to the website sbos.org. Our guest for this show is B.J. Stevenson, and she is an international sculptor and teacher. She teaches both in the classroom and at public sculpture events that she will be demonstrating for us. So welcome, B.J. Thank you. How are you? I'm doing very well, so I'm excited to hear about sculpture. So tell us a little bit about what inspires you. Mostly the stone inspires me. Uh, and How does it inspire you? Is it the shape of the stone or the patterns in it? It's the energy of the stone. The energy? Yes. I can walk by a stone and if it has no energy or it doesn't talk to me, then I just walk by it. But if, if I come near a stone and it starts talking to me, then I stop and listen. And that's how I pick my stones. So you create a connection with the stone before you even start sculpting. Very interesting. Oh, and does yeah. it act, do you actually hear the voice of the stone? Yes. In your mind. Wow. That's very interesting. Well, would, you wouldn't have a relationship with somebody you had no connection at all and didn't, you couldn't hear and talk to or have anything to say. Exactly. So I don't have a relationship with stones that don't talk to me. <laughs> Beautiful. That's great. And I suppose if you're going to spend so much time with a particular piece of stone that you might as well have a good relationship. I have to. Yes. Excellent. So what is your background? How did you begin sculpting? Well, I didn't want to uh, clean house, so I took <laughs> classes. <laughs> and finally, uh, I took all sorts of art classes, but basically I finally came to sculpture, stone sculpture, and uh, I felt like I had come home. This was where I belonged. Excellent. So how long have you been sculpting in this way? Oh, for... Oh, it seemed like 100 years. And, oh, no. <laughs> but it's only 38 years. 38 so. years. So you started early. That's great. No, I was middle-aged, actually. And my, no. I had kids and, and, and was married and finally got bored with cleaning house. Oh, I can understand that one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So today... Tell us a little bit about your studio. Where is it and how is that working for you? I don't have one yet. You don't have a studio? No, I used to, but we moved out and we're getting a new studio. We, meaning the Peninsula, oh God, Peninsula Museum, Museum of Art. And uh, most of the artists that were in this complex that I used to be in, in mm -hmm. Belmont, is now moving to uh, Burlingame. And, uh, we have a building that's going to be built out and broken up into small, smaller you know, studios. Oh, nice. And I get to design my own studio now, wow. my new studio. So that's exciting. That's great. So you, what plans do you have? What are you going to include in your studio? Well, I have to have work tables for students and uh, space for uh, the uncarved stone right. and all the materials. And then I, have, I will have a show space for the finished sculptures, the small ones, not the outdoor ones, right. but the smaller ones. Excellent. Wow, lucky you to get to design your own studio oh, from yes. scratch. And you'll be working in a space where there are other artists, sort of in a collective oh, yes. environment? Oh, yes. There'll be a museum. And then there will also be probably oh, 35 or 40 other artists in wow. this complex. How and we'll exciting. have we'll have shows and and uh, we'll be having a uh, Silicon Valley Open Studios probably next year in the new place. So excellent! Looking forward to that. So, tell us a little bit about how you choose your stone. How do you go about finding them? I go to uh, different sculptors who uh, order it by the ton, actually by the eight or nine or 10 tons 
of stone. They take what they want, and then they sell it to the rest of us. And I go over there, and like I said, the stones talk to me. So if I walk around looking for a stone and nobody says anything, I go home. Well, you brought some images of some of your indoor sculptures. So why don't we take a look at those now? All right. Tell us a little bit about the ones that you brought. That's Burning Bush. And when I was carving that sculpture, uh, a friend of mine came down and said, oh, that looks like the burning bush. And I said, what, what do you mean, burning bush? You know, that, right. that, uh, you know where uh, God told Moses what he was supposed to do. And wow. I stopped carving, didn't carve it for six months. But finally got back to it. It's beautiful. So you have brought some tools in, and you are going to show us a demonstration of how you create, or how, how you use the tools, yes. and also show us how you teach. All right. Um, so why don't we start that now? All right. Very good. Yeah, I'm looking forward. I have never sculpted before, and I am going to get my very first sculpture lesson. I'm very excited. Okay. The first thing you do is meditate with the stone, or connect whatever way you choose to do that. Then the next thing you start is with a, an aggressive tool. This is a pointed tooth chisel, and it does more uh, aggressive type carving, like that. And uh, it makes grooves as it carves which uh, help take off the stone that you don't want, because you just take off things you don't want. And then you take to go to the next tool, which has a flat tooth chisel, to kind of help smooth it down. Because when you're, when you're carving, you carve it all with one tool, the whole thing. The whole sculpture gets carved with, and you turn it over and you, look at this side and you carve it and, and then you come back and, and uh, then you start with the next tool and you carve that all the way around. But it's important how you hold the tools. A chisel is held in the middle like this and a hammer is held in the middle around the fattest part. By the way, this is a really old hammer it's my lucky hammer, so I brought it tonight. And you do the smoothing out process. Then if you have little corners that still have some things in it, you use a flat chisel to, to kind of clean up the lines. And you work on it like this. And then when you've finished all the roughing out and you know exactly what it's basically going to look like, uh, you start rasping. And this is a cabinet rasp. Uh, people use it on wood, unless you're a stone sculptor. And then you use it on the stones. And you go backwards and forward, not sideways. Sideways doesn't do anything but scratch the stone. So you do it backward and forward, and it will smooth it down even more. And then there's the, the these are Italian tools. And they're the backbone of any sculptor's tool room because they rasp. And rasping means smooth down. You can do a lot of shaping with this. Um, then you go to the next step, and another tool, smaller, means finer. So you get a smoother line with this. You go over it and over it. So it looks like you start out rough and then you get go to smoother and smoother tools and that's yes. how you get it smooth? Yes. And when you go through all these tools, then you can get down to, this is my diamond tool. And it has little uh, industrial grade diamonds put into this. And it does a very smooth, fine job of rasping or sanding rasping. And then you start 
the sandpaper process. And sandpaper process is a long process. You start with about a 60 grain sandpaper and you sand all over and sand until there are no more scratches except the ones you put in with the sandpaper. And then you go to the next, which is probably about 120 grit. And the grit tells you how many pieces of sand per square inch. So the coarser the sandpaper, the less amount of uh, grit in it. So this is a 120, and that will do a certain sanding. And then you notice it, it changes color because these are wet, dry sandpapers. And uh, I would dip it in water and sand with it because it gives me a, a smoother finish, uh, a better sanding job. And I go through um, six different sandpapers in this. I start with uh, probably 200, and I go up to 1,500 uh, grit sandpaper. And uh, when that gets all finished with the sanding all over, and there's no scratches, there's nothing, then you can start the polishing process. And that you do with the polishing compound. And in the video, you will, you will see more of this. You can also use power tools. But I showed you the tools that people used before electricity. So this is what we use when we don't have power. So Sally, would you like to come over and uh, yes, definitely. learn how to uh, carve? I am ready. So this is what you do in your public sculpting experiences. You take people like me who have never sculpted before and you show them how to use the tools? Yes, sometimes they're not so, so cooperative, so <laughs> I have to talk them into it, but yes. Okay, I'll grab so the tool. Hold it in the middle. Yes. Now, do you know, you never do this. Do you know why you wouldn't do this? See the thumb? You hurt your thumb. Well, if you miss this and no. you hit here, ouch, you'd break the thumb. Don't want to do that. No, so you do it like this. Then if you miss and hit, it hurts, but it doesn't break anything. It doesn't break anything. Ah, okay. good tip. So, thumb yes. straight. Yes. All right. No. Yes. In the so middle. Right in the middle. Yeah, I can feel it's a bit thicker there. Yes. Okay. And so I now, just. If you just want to make a mark, you start here. But if you okay. want to remove stone, you go out to the edge. To the edges. Okay. So I want to remove some stone. Just whack it hard. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> this is fun. This is a lot different from painting. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but you see, on painting, you can put it back. Or you can paint over it. Right. You paint over. You can't paint. If it's gone, it's gone on the stone. This is fun. OK. So, so. I could come to one of your public experiences and do this? Oh, yeah. Excellent. Uh, you want to try another tool? Yes, please. OK. OK, what's next? This is the grasp. OK, it's pretty rough. Yes. How do your fingers like not get all ripped up uh, by it? They get they're tough. You're tough. Okay. I'm, tough. I'm not tough. But. I know. Right. Okay. <laughs> okay. So Turn what do it I do? Over. All right. So the rounded side down. As you get more. Okay. okay. And just. Oh, that's not, not too bad. Back. Yes. There. I see. I could do this all day. <laughs> this is fun. Yes. But after a while, it gets a little bored. So, and some of these tools are curved tools. Yes. And. Why, how is that different? So like this smaller one that's very curved, would you use that to make curved uh, sides and Usually lines? if I'm doing a concave space, like this is, right there, this yeah. is concave, mm -hmm. uh, it really works nicely to be able to go like that. Or if I had a circle in the middle here that I wanted to make go down uh, and ah. carve. So you use the outside of the curve yes. to make. If I want to do. Convex uh -huh. the other way? Huh? Yeah. I can see that it must take many hours to make this rough stone mm -hmm. turn into a sculptor. Yes, it does. Excellent. Well, you have a video that you created that shows the process from the beginning to the end. So why don't we take a look at that video now okay. and see Very how good. it works.
That was absolutely beautiful, BJ. Thank you for that demonstration and the video. What I want to know is how long does it take to create a small sculpture like the one in the video? About 40 hours. 40 hours, wow. Yeah, I spread that over a six week period. So 40 hours for one piece and you're working on several yes. different ones at the same time, mm -hmm. wow. So I would love to see some more of your images, the indoor sculptures and you have some outdoor sculptures too. So let's take a look at those images now and you can tell us a little bit about the stone. Okay. The, that's the uh, guardians, and that's uh, alabaster, pink alabaster. That's beautiful. And the guardian is Ita uh, Utah alabaster, and the disc is black soapstone. And you connected those together? Yes, it turns. Oh, nice. Uh, being, uh, she's, she's kind of an alien. <laughs> Very abstract. Yes. And this is totem, probably the best piece I ever did. Uh, black soapstone from Virginia. That's a very hard stone, isn't it? It's very dense, yes. And uh, it rasps, but it chisels hard. Uh, this is the outdoor sculptures, uh, the public carving feather rock pieces. Uh, this is Stranger's Harmony. Um, so is Probably this had 350, 400 people work on that piece. Wow. Over, over a summer. This is the county fair piece, and this is one had like 900 people working on it in 10 days. My goodness. Not very long, each one, I guess. <laughs> oh, no. They, they took a long time? Yeah. Wow. And Philosopher's Stone is limestone, um, and that too had probably 400 people working on it. Wow. And this is how it works. Uh, at this particular time, I only had one person working on this one. Uh, but uh, it had up to, it probably had 350 people working on it. Wow. How many people at the same time? Uh, depending on the stone, I think I had four or five people working on that at one time. Wow. So you give the same kind of instruction you gave to me and then people... Mm -hmm feel their way around the stone? There's not a plan that you have a, no. for it? So it just... Because but, once I give you the hammer and the chisel and you walk up to the stone, you are a sculptor. Right. From a past life. And your knowledge of sculpting kicks in. Oh, so if I show interest, you think I already have done it before? Is that I what you're saying? I know you have. You know I have. Yes. Ah, so I'm talking to my inner Michelangelo. <laughs> I recognize you. Yes. You know, from a past life. Very nice. Yes. And so hundreds and hundreds of people come through. Do you advertise these? Do you have any upcoming public experiences? I'm going to be carving one for the Penin Mid Peninsula High School oh. in Menlo Park, probably in the spring. And uh, their student body and hopefully uh, their school community, teachers, et cetera, mm -hmm. will be working on it. And uh, that's the only one I have coming right up right now. So, but people can find out about them and just show up? They don't need to make an appointment? I don't if know. If you do this a public a one, not the one at the high school, but if oh, you do another one at I the fair. If I do a public one, yes, everybody that walks by gets to do it. So you do it in a public area where yes. people can just happen by? Yes. Oh, wow. Like that in a park like area fun. or uh, I did one in, in Atherton down by the library and I had probably 400 people working on that one. Wow, one excellent. Well, that sounds like a fun experience. I definitely like to try it out myself and work with other people. Yes. I've been bitten by the sculpting bug. Excellent. So. You are a Silicon Valley Open Studios artist. Tell us some stories about some of your experiences. Well, this year, um, when we did it, uh, I sent out a personal invitation uh, to people because I had a sale because I was moving. Right. And um, so people were intrigued by that. And I got a lot of people that came. and. Uh, sold quite a bit of sculpture because everything was on sale and people <laughs> love sale. Right. And then um, 
I had students or people who'd come in for the last 25 years, cause, or 27 years, because I'd been there 27 <laughs> years. Wow. And I had one young man come in, and he, he said, BJ, I want to thank you for saving my life. Saving your life? Yes. Wow. And I kind of like, uh, <laughs> and I you know, couldn't remember anything about it. He said, a number of years ago, I came in and I told you that I had just had a heart attack two months ago. Wow. And uh, I'm, I was a football player, and I can't play football anymore. I said, well, are you okay? He said, yeah, but I can't play football anymore. And, right. and I said, so, uh, what did you learn? What do you mean, what did I learn? Right. I said, you learned something from uh, this experience. Right. And uh, he, so I told him, he said, no, didn't learn anything. I said, well, if you don't change your life, you'll probably have another heart attack. Oh, dear. And he did. Oh, no. And when he had the second heart attack, he said, she told me so. So he changed his life. He went back to school. Excellent. Went into music. He's very successful now. Excellent. And he wanted me to know that it was all because I warned him. Right, well, words of wisdom. Well, thank you very much for being on our show. I very much enjoyed seeing your sculpture and learning a little bit about the tools and how it feels to whack on the stone. So thank you very much for being here. And thank you for watching Talk Art. I get to say thank you.